Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, it's your boy Big Slain Hope, and I got another video for y'all. In this video, I'm going to be unpacking like the stabbing of the two sisters, the twin sisters, I believe it was in Park Slope, Brooklyn. I'm going to play a few video clips, and then we're going to unpack some of this video and have a conversation. So bear with me. Here we go. No, I'm not attacking it. Fuck that fucking I'm not attacking it. That's it, yeah. From this video, it's very unclear like what the problem was, what the issue is, but this dude seems very upset about something. And he's kind of like seen pressing somebody outside. I don't really know what it is about, um, but this is another video to see what was going on. For two suspects wanting for stabbing twin sisters inside a deli in Park Slope, one of them dying, 19 year old Samia Spain was fatally stabbed in the neck and chest. Her sister survived after the attackers stabbed her in the arm. Eyewitnesses say the stabbing happened after the victim turned down one of the suspect's advances. They're not sober. They get rejected and they just escalated tenfold. Like, I, we was all having a good night before this. We just had left and we went to the store to get food. We all we was all getting sandwiches or like beef patties just to eat. We're hungry. We want to go home and this happens. Mm. Yesterday, family and friends held a small vigil near the scene of that attack. In Brooklyn are searching for two suspects. So there you have it. Those are both videos. Um, before I get into my commentary, um, I just want to say my condolences to, you know, the the victim, family and stuff like that. Like, it's always hard when you lose somebody, especially whoever the parents are, right? It's hard to lose your children um, behind some senseless stuff like that. And before I even get into the commentary, make sure you, you hit the link in the description. You can access that video, um, the documentary that I'm in, We Came to Heal. Also, you can purchase my book, Who Profits with Black Man Gangbang. Um, and yeah, man, you know, you can become part of the channel. I got a lot of content. I got a lot of different categories of playlists. But make sure you like, you subscribe, you know, you share the video if you, if you, if you mess with it. So let's get into this, right? So I showed y'all two videos. And before I even get into, like, my two cents, right? Like, I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Um, I know there's things that are being said that happened, but again, I wasn't there. And you always got to investigate when you hear things. Because what I do know is this, is that the news is going to sell the story. Like, their job is to find a perp, find a perpetrator, and find a victim, um, and create this story, and sell the story, and sell a narrative. That's the job of the news outlets. I'm not saying that whatever they're saying didn't happen. I'm just saying I don't know for a fact what happened. I don't care what anybody say, right? Like, people are always going to say whatever. And like I said, the, the media are going to sell the story. Um, so I'm just operating from the outside, just listening to what it is. But, you know, I must say this. There has been a rise in men, like, harming women, right, um, in violent ways. Like, violent crimes committed by men towards women, there has been a rise in that. I'm not going to use the word femicide because that is like some, that's a propaganda word um, by feminists, right? Um, to, to add fuel to fire and, and, and to portray a certain picture, right? When in reality, uh, men die at higher rates than women, right? So I'm always going to uplift the truth. And there's, there's always a group of people that are always trying to twist things and, and, and make it seem like it's something else. But I can assure you, men die at way higher rates than women. Uh, men are homeless at way higher rates than women. Um, un unemployment, mental health issues, um, incarceration, victims of violent crimes, you name it, right? Men are leading in, in, in damn near all those categories. So don't get bamboozled behind the propaganda of, of, of the feminists, right? But anyway, but I can still acknowledge that there has been a rise in attacks from men towards women. And this seems, and a lot of times they're 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 almost similar, right? Like it's always this narrative of like, and I'm not putting quote because saying it's not true. Like I, like again, um, there's there's always this narrative about like they got turned down, and 
because of that, you they killed him or or they they did some some harm to him. Now I'm gonna say this. I definitely know there's a lot of suckers out there. I definitely know. I definitely have seen in my lifetime guys get upset because a girl didn't want to talk to them or a girl was like, I'm not interested or ill or whatever they said, right? And they said, well, F you then, B. Uh, and, you know, and, you know, get irate or, or do weird stuff, right? I always thought that was weird. Um, if my, if any of my friends ever did that, like, I always check my friends. Like, I always... Was like, bro, what's wrong with you? Like, I always, I didn't allow some of those things to happen around me. Like, to this day. Like, if my man started doing some weird stuff like that, like, I'd be like, bro, what's wrong with you, bro? Like, you approached her. Like, you went out your way to talk to her. Now, again, I don't know what happened. I don't know, because, see, what happens sometimes is, like, you don't know, you really don't know your children. And I'm not saying them girls had anything to do anything. I'm just telling you, I'm just giving you a whole picture, right? There is situations where we don't know what happened. Right, we don't know what what could have previously happened. Um, we don't know if there was a part of something. We do, we don't know, right? And sometimes parents don't know what their children really be doing. They really don't. They don't know if their children could have been part of something, like setting somebody up, a scheme, X, Y, Z, whatever. We don't know. And when things happen, like I said, the media's role is to just sell a story, right? Like I I don't see stories in the media. When one dude, both dudes is gangbanging, right? And one person gets shot by another gangbanger. And I see how the media will try to make this person or like a goody two-shoe, a victim, right? Of, of some situation because they're trying to sell a story. And they're trying to basically condemn this person, right? And, and, and put them away, right? So they always sell certain stories. So again, I don't know. But what I'm saying is that there has been a rise in, in these events and in, in, in these violent crimes towards women, just like there has been a rise in women committing violent crimes and going to jail, right? And not going to jail for holding. And I, I made a video about this briefly. So there has been a shift in our society. And I'm not trying to sit here and blame the single mothers. Um, but, but these are some of those effects, right? And I said this in other videos. These are some of the effects that we are witnessing. These men these young boys, these young men who who are running around like ticking time bombs because they can't control their emotions, right? Because they they, they don't understand their feelings. Um, they're very impulsive. They have these very visceral reactions. A lot of these things are symptoms of single motherhood, of, of a young boy being raised in an environment or not, not being around enough men. Um... Or not having a father figure, right? A positive male role model father figure. So you're starting to see more and more and more of these things. Not to mention the stuff that they feed in us in the food, right? All the estrogen that is in the food, um, the music, right? The music always been the thing, but I think the music is a little different now, right? Like, um, is 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 arousing like certain type kind of behavior in in our in our younger people, right? The things that are being said. Um, the, the evoking of demon time, like, like just, just the things that are being said in, in the beats, right? The difference in the beats, the beats were a little different back then. So there's different frequencies that beats sent to people. But anyway, I want to get back to the single mother thing. And this is not to blame those women. I, I'm not sitting here trying to blame, but we have an issue. We have a problem because there is too many of our sisters out there who think they got it under control, and they really don't. They think that because you keep a roof over the head of the child, that because you get them clothes all the time, or you put food on the table, you think that is enough. A lot of these kids running around here doing this crazy stuff as iPad babies. Literally iPad babies who had, who had to raise themselves because the mothers, right, or the parents don't have the time to raise them. Don't have the time to instill any values in them. And and half the time, the even the, the parents don't got any values or any respect. I get on the train sometimes or the bus and I see these young people. I see these young people and I see the disrespect that they carry with them. I was on the bus the other day and I seen a young dude get on the bus and he damn near like bumped this lady all crazy. And the lady like, yo, you could have said, excuse me. Like, come on, man. Like, they don't have no respect. And I don't mean to put everything on the parents because sometimes your children could go out there and pick up certain different things from different people. But it's like, 
a lot of these kids are not being taught anything at home. Because their parents are so busy. They busy on Instagram. They busy on their social media that they just throw the iPad to the kids. And these kids grow up without no morals, without no respect. You know, even when I was doing what I was doing, my mother, in, she ingrained respect in me. If I ever got on a bus and act like the bus belonged to me, or I'm going to put my bag in the chair so nobody sit next to me like these kids be doing, or, or, or put their foot on the chair so nobody, like, the things that you, my mother would smack me. And I don't want to go back to this cultural thing, but it is a cultural thing. In certain households, certain things don't rock. It, it just don't rock. So even when I stepped out there to the streets, even when I was doing what I was doing, my mother still ingrained in me to respect the elderly people, to respect women, to respect people, to have respect. My mother ingrained in that in me. To this day, I see older people, I'll be like, oh, what up? We be chopping it up. I'll be like, uncle, nephew, whatever, like, out of respect. You get what I'm saying? When, when the older people see me, they be like, what up, nephew? Like, you know, out of respect. But a lot of these people, the culture has been lost. And a lot of these parents are doing a poor job at parenting. So I say all of this to say that th there is a concoction that is going on in our communities, right? That is leading to like this rise in young men. Feeling like they could hurt women. I'm just going with the narrative. Feeling like they could hurt women because you got rejected, bro. Because you got rejected. And like I said, I don't know what happened. It could be something else behind this. Because a lot of times, sometimes it do be something else, right? But if it is as, as they're saying it is, to, to, to cause bodily harm to somebody because you got rejected, bro. Like, like what type of... Ticking time bomb, like, 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 like what, in, and what come, the, see, because this is the thing I'll be thinking about. Do you know in what mental state you had to be in to feel like you got to stab somebody because you got rejected? And I don't, I don't care if you drunk, that, that don't got nothing to do, it's not about you being drunk. There been a problem with you before you got drunk. For you to, for you to feel like you can go from zero to a thousand because you being rejected, I tell dudes all the time, stop approaching women. Like, yo, when a girl's into you, she gonna let you know. She gonna give you the signs like, come talk to me, come approach me. But these dudes, they be putting themselves out there, some of these dudes, and they don't got no male guidance. They put themselves out there, they chase, 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 get turned down, and get crazy. And I witnessed some of you suckers doing that. I witnessed some of you suckers get upset or try to mouth off at a chick. Because she didn't want you. Even if a chick say it in a certain way. Listen. Because I know some of y'all excuses is old. Oh, the way she said it. So what? You approached her. Even if she say it in a way you don't like it. So what? You approached. You bothered her. You stopped her to bother her. You did that. You did that. So if her reaction is she's annoyed because you might be the hundredth guy. You might be the hundredth guy in that day that bothered her. She might be a little annoyed. She might be a little upset. Plus, you don't even know what she's been through. You don't even know how her day was. Her day could have been horrible and she's frustrated. And it might not even have to do with guys approaching her. So if she responds a certain way, why you mad? You did that. You put yourself in that situation. You went over there and bothered her. You know, when I, when I used to be approaching women in the street, well, not in the street, but like when I used to approach women in certain settings, I would always ask them, is it okay if I bother you real quick? That's how I approach it. I'm giving you jewels real quick. If you must, you don't have to. But I would be like, is it okay if I bother you? And a, and a chick will let you know. She'll be like, now you good? Or she'll be like, yeah, it's a problem. Like, she'll let you know. It's just like when, you, when you're trying to dance. When you're trying to get a dance in the spot. And how the girls look back. They give you that look back to see if you're cute or whatever. It's a similar thing. It's a similar thing. So, the point is. The point that I'm trying to make is a lot of these things are happening because these young boys, they don't have no male role models. And and for whatever reason, maybe the father left, maybe it's the mom's fault. Um, but I listen, I urge you, sisters, if you don't take none from this video, I urge you, you can't do it alone. We can't be sitting here talking about it takes a village and then all of a sudden we feel like we could do it on our own. You can't. My mother knew that when she was raising me. She said, a woman, I, I can't teach you how to be a man. 
And I know some of y'all gonna refute this and y'all wanna talk about the, the anecdotal experiences and, and the woman who, who might have raised good sons. Th those numbers are skewed compared to the to the men that grow up without male influence and suffer. Y'all think because somebody gets a degree or get a, a get a job that that means they're successful. No, a lot of these dudes are socially awkward. A lot of these dudes have emotional intelligent issues. They have a lot of bunch of other things that are that are plaguing them that they might not even talk to you because a lot of boy a lot of times the, the boys can't talk to their moms. I couldn't talk to my mom. So a lot of things you're not even going to understand or you're not even going to know that that boy is going through because you don't know what it feels like to walk in the, in the shoes of a man. And 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 I get it. For whatever reason, the father not around, and that might be because of the father, or that might be because of you. But it is your responsibility to try to get some male influence in that young boy's life. It is your responsibility. Damn near 85 or more percent of the men in prison come from a single mother household. A lot of single mothers raise dysfunctional kids. And again... Don't get in your bag. Don't don't get in your feelings. Don't get defensive. I'm just letting you know that a lot of single moms raise dysfunctional kids because children that grow up without that balance of masculine and feminine, they have a lot of issues. They have a lot of issues. Children, not just children, humans need balance. So what ends up happening is what ends up happening is moms are trying to play mom and dad, right? So some moms become too overly aggressive, right? Which is bad. Or they, they, they become too coddling, which is bad too. Because you, you, you can't be expected to have both of the balance. You just can't be expected. So I urge you, man. These things are plaguing our communities. This is not just a, your household thing. Your children are going to go out there. Your boys are going to go out there. Your daughters are going to go out there. And your daughters don't know what, what, what a real man what a real man should be like. Because they never had the love of their dad. The first man that's supposed to love him in a non-sexual way. They, they didn't have that. So they go out there. And the first little piece of attention that some guy give them, they, they all head over heels. Now they're getting played, now they're getting used, now they're getting bamboozled because they didn't have that in their house. They didn't have that. Like these things are plaguing our community. And you you seen you're gonna keep seeing a lot of these young boys that can't control their emotions because they don't have no man to teach them how to do it. Or they don't have no man to teach them how to walk this life as a man, in the shoes of a man, to teach them certain things, certain values, certain principles, certain understanding of certain things. They don't have that. And again, like I said, this is not to blame because a lot of y'all get in your bag instead of seeing the big picture. Forget about for a second how you feel about what I'm saying and listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. Understand what I'm saying. You need to understand what I'm saying. A lot of these young boys that run around here while are byproducts of they iPad babies, a lot of them. And they're byproducts of single parent households. I had to go to prison. I had to go to prison. But my mom was straight up with me. She was like, yo, I can't teach you how to be a man. You got to figure it out. But she tried to get me. She tried to get my uncles involved in my life. She tried to get other male role models in my life to try to help me navigate manhood and masculinity. And a lot of our brothers in our communities are struggling. These young boys are struggling. They can't even hear. They can't even sit down. When a man talks to them. They feel like it's disrespect. They act just like their mamas. They get that from their mamas. The same thing that women do, the same way that women try to tone police men, when men try to talk to them a certain way, they be like, oh, why are you talking like that? And why you, because they're not used to, they never had their daddies at home. A lot of them never had their daddies at home. So they're not used to a man talking to them a certain way. They're not used to a man talking to them with direction or telling them certain things. But they, but yet they claim they want a leader. Yet they claim they want a follower. But you, you never had that in your house. And the same thing happened with these young boys. They act just like their mamas. They caddy like their mamas. They argumentative like their mamas. They don't like authority like their mamas. They, they complain when a man try to talk to them a certain way. Like, yo, come here, little bro. Like, you know, or try to try to teach him. They, they, they can't stand that. Just like their mamas. So you're raising these young boys 
defective. You're, you're racing defective men. And it's funny because a lot of times in our society today, you will hear these women complain about the men today. But a lot of the men today, this single mother, this single mother epidemic has been going on for a long time, for decades. And initially, it wasn't because of the man leaving the house, right? Initially, it was because, you know, the state fighting against our communities. And now it has gone to the point for whatever reason, I don't know what the reason is. Some 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 fathers are just abandoning their children. Um, some mothers are just being vindictive and keeping the 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 the, the, the fathers away because the fathers don't want to be with them. So it's a lot of things that are going on, but you know who suffer? The children are suffering. The children are suffering. And a lot of times, in some other cases, women just decided, not decided, but they was left with, with nothing but degenerate men to procreate with. When they took all the strong men away, and when they came doing these sweeps in our neighborhood or killing our leaders or killing the man that was strong, that was uplifting, that was doing certain things in our community, it left the degenerates in the neighborhood. And guess what? The women had to procreate. The women, you know, we are social creatures. We, we, we want to be loved. We want to be around people. And when you when, when you leave them no choice but to procreate with the with the dirtbags and the gangbangers and the thugs and because you took all the other men away. I don't I don't really blame them for that. Right. But at, at, at this point, we, we, we're a little different. I will, I will assume things have shifted a little bit. But the point is, we got to figure it out. We got to get these young men some help before they get to prison. And sometimes we ain't going to be able to help some of them. They just going to end up going to prison. But a lot of these things is a catalyst of things that are happening in our communities and are leading to these things. And are leading to these young boys that can't control themselves. You know, down this path of, of, of carrying out violence, not just towards, towards the women in our community, um, but towards the elderly and other men. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Y'all stay blessed. Peace.